in a history, and a history is trapped in us. Or in the words of Christina Sharp, the past that is not past always reappears to rupture the present. In other words, white supremacy continues to have its way in this city, in this state, in this nation, and in this world. But I, in the midst of all the pain, suffering, and lament, stand before you tonight with a deep sense of gratitude and encouragement because I see over the last three years this growing tide of people that will no longer accept the move for a false peace in the city that literally means peace. There have been those that have begun, begun to straighten out their backs and speak and end the silence of the night and say that we want justice and we want it now. There are those that riff off the words of Martin Luther King who once said that justice or peace is not the absence of tension. Peace is the presence of justice. And so when we see this occupation that is now over 20 days long, you guys are engaged in the work. You all are engaged in the work of peacemaking. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. You are engaged in the work of peacemaking. Our city is committed to peacekeeping, which is strikingly different. Peacekeeping says, let's move the problem up under the rug and keep things on the hush. Peacemaking says, let's lift up the rug and see what's so ugly so that we can confront it and overcome it. And here in this space, we have been doing peacemaking. We have been calling on the powers to do right, to do justice and love mercy, and to walk humbly with those who are most vulnerable in this city. I'll close this final thought. It's important that we, as some folks say, walk and chew gum at the same time, right? We have to keep track of the personhood of humanity, this precious, beautiful, image of God-bearing man named John Neville. He was more, as his, some of his children said, he was more than a cause for activists. He was a human being who was loved and cared for, whose life mattered. And we also have to keep track of the ways in which this tragic killing points us to the reality of the way our city is structured. In a certain way, our city is structurally hogtied. In other words, in the city of Winston-Salem, the structures and systems are designed to take the breath from black and brown people to crush their chances for flourishing, for life, for dreams, for happiness. And we in this moment must call for justice in the case of John Neville and justice to roll down in this city like an everlasting stream. Though our brother John Neville can't breathe on this side again, we breathe in his honor. Turn to your neighbor and say, we breathe in his honor. In this space, we are co-conspirators for justice. The word co-conspirator literally means to breathe together. And so when we go from this moment breathing together, organizing together, protesting together, speaking truth to power together, bending this city towards peace and justice together, and may we not back down until it happens, until Winston-Salem finally lives into its name and is truly a city of peace with justice. God bless you all.
there is a great deal of energy in this circle. This energy is a powerful energy. All of it is energy in this world. It's a very powerful energy. Atomic, almost nuclear. About 25 years ago, that was powerful. That was strong. But that was not this powerful. You see, the power of the masses, 25 years ago. This is realization, you don't have to meditate for it. Reality is this. That this time in which we are in calls for a different response. And it calls for a different image. You see, all of this youth and energy, I'm supposed to be in bed right now. Keeping me up. Keeping you well. Take this energy and be brave with it. You tell those people where are those buildings. You tell those people that in those big buildings who make those big decisions. No more. Your time is up. There's a time to pray. There's a time to fight. There's a time to peace and there's a time to war. If 
you had but two days to live. And the only thing that could destroy your 48 hours is the interference physically of another human being stopping you seeing your 48 hours. Would you fight for it? If you had two weeks, the only thing, the only impediment that you have is another person trying to restrict you or prohibit you or castrate you from every inhalation and exhalation that you can possibly exude within 48 hours. What you fight for? Huh? <laughs> if you believe that, can you imagine that there are people around you that live by you, live with you, live next to you, work with you, that struggle each and every day of their lives to stay alive. And if you believe that those 48 hours are worthwhile for you, it's impossible to believe in the same fashion for somebody else. And would you fight for it? I'm pretty sure they yeah. You see, Jesus, who is speaking to Jesus? I think that Jesus would have probably been around a little longer if he would have had it. You know, maybe in M16. If he had a handgun, maybe he wouldn't have run so much or hid so often, sneaking to tell the gospel. Can you see this in your life? If you had the tool the weaponry to sustain yourself here on this earth. Give yourself maybe 48 years instead of 48 hours. Would you fight for that? So I'm going to tell you now what I intend for you to do. And that is fight. They can no longer kill you by paper. They cannot do that. I won't allow it. It's your instructions. Fight for your lives. You see, here's the problem with power. Too much power makes one forget about what it's like to be weak. Sixteen hundreds Europeans came and they became powerful. Dominance is the dominant trait huh? in those who hate you racially. Take their power. With every rule, every restriction, every prohibition. Everything that they tell you that you cannot do, evaluate it, reevaluate it. And when they say that it can't be done, show them that it can be done. This is power. You can transform the world with this. Do what our ancestors were not capable of doing. And you, you come equipped with this, this kind of strength, this ability to not uh, give a damn. Right? Take that and expound on it. When they say no, you say yes. When they say die, you say live. When they say down, you get up. Faith without works is dead. Pray all you want. But since 1619, God has been waiting for you to inspire God to move on your behalf. Don't 
be lazy like those who are in power or want to, who want dominance. <laughs> Command your power back for your personal life, for your family life, for the life of your community. When you see something that's being done wrong, stand up and say it's wrong. It may cost you your job, but it's 2020 and they're still killing us like it's 1965. Donald Trump once asked the question, what do you got to lose? <laughs> it's a very valid question. Show him what's worth fighting for. Everything against you. Everything in opposition of you. As a human being, you have the power to defeat. But you must transcend one thing. You must transcend the notion that you are fighting for just rights. You must transcend the notion that you are fighting for humanity. No, you're fighting for something bigger than that. You're fighting because within the universe, Black or white, it does not matter. There are no other beings like you. If you allow them to continue to do what they do to destroy us, then we will not have those bragging rights. Love yourself deeply. Fight for you. Love yourself deeply. Fight for you. And inspire somebody else. You know. What is enlightenment? Enlightenment is simply this. It is realizing that the world is, well, rather schooled. That is the way that it is. And to recognize that you are the vast part of fixing it. That's enlightenment. And you commit every moment of your being. Every moment. You're not so much concerned about what's on your feet or what's on your, your back. You, your toolbox is filled with snippets of history that make it necessary for you to realize that this is an ongoing battle. This is a human battle. It takes human beings to fix this. the Neville family. It was wrong to have killed Brother John. And those that did it will know it. Because we will not stop. We will hold them accountable. We will say something. We don't care about your badge and your gun. We don't care about what you drive or what they call you in those places that keep you elevated egotistically. We don't care. We're from the field. We ain't too cozy with the house. It's your fight back. Okay? Yes. All right. Bless you all. You have the power now. Every woman, every child, every boy, every man, you are supercharged. You are the answer. Everything that comes before you, every situation, whether it's family or anybody, look at it and be the answer for it. Sometimes the answer is walking off. Sometimes the answer is saying, shut the fuck up. That's enlightening. The problem with those is they sit in push chairs and they don't know us. They shall. They shall know you. Namaste, my friends.
Bluetooth connected. Thank you, Reverend Miller Bass. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Reverend Sensei Kushi. We will now have a dance performance by one of our occupiers, Mia. who are helping with the candle ritual, come up please, so that we can prepare for our candle lighting ritual. Mai, for those of you who've forgotten, and I will be leading our candle lighting ritual this evening. But before I do, I want to invite all of us to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. Remember that you have breath. Continue to breathe into this space because together we keep this space alive. As we share and hold space as a community to stand in solidarity with John Neville's family and loved ones, we remember and center the legacy of John Neville's story. It is important that as we seek justice for John Neville, we Remember him and the ways in which those closest to him remember him. In the words of his children, John Neville's name is more than a hashtag. He was a human being. 
He was a man who almost was never seen without a basketball in his hands. A fervent fan of the UNC Tar Heel basketball team. Loved Jamaican food. Listen, that was good. And danced whenever he could. So when we say John Neville's name, say his name. John say his name. John that is more than just a hashtag. That is more than just a name. That is a whole life, legacy, human, and voice. For our vigil this evening, we will engage in a candle lighting ritual to remember the life and legacy of John Neville, the human being. John Neville, the man who had dreams, passions, and loved ones. John Neville, a man who grew Round up 46? in this very city. What do you want me to do? Right here Pan in Winston Salem. Are you going to use it? Okay, cool. We light these candles in remembrance of him. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. I was just informed that because it is very, very windy, and because we as a community strive for safety at all time, who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Instead of the candle lighting ritual, we ask that folks with phones or some set of light, light those phones right now. As so. I will now invite Jelena Shepherd to offer us a hymn. You are invited to join along if you know the words. It is a very popular hymn. Or you can just be in this space.
give her a clap one more time for this one. Our voice has some seasoning to it. I will now invite Bree to come up to share some spoken word. still raging. I'm not ready to die, but I feel so caged in. I beg God for a moment, but the peace just keeps eluding me. I'm one and oh versus the struggle, but this battle feels so elementary. My knees buckle from the weight, no words to placate, no sound, no hate. Crawl to my knees and I pray, because inside I'm losing the fight. The world is pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, and I'm losing my might. When I die, bury me in daffodils. Pictures of my lost smile to adorn your window sills and tell my children it wasn't for nothing. We write our own stories and mine is intertwined in their victories. But to my children, I must say you are the best of me. Take my name and spread it through the stars. Fight for the lives of those left behind those bars and fight for the words that I'll never get to say. When there's no time left, funny. Somehow we all find the time to pray. And now I hear you over me saying your goodbyes and I reach out to hold you, but all I can do is cry and the doctor stops life support and you squeeze my hands as I go. And beyond my lips is a whisper that you'll never know. I'm sorry for all I never said. I'm sorry for the times I didn't show. If these are my last words, I pray you carry on and joy you see. I don't wanna say goodbye, but it seems the choice is above me. If we were made in his image, Call us by our name. Say his name. Say his name. Give y'all self some love. Y'all, y'all. Now we can be straight. That dancer, oh my God. Uh, the amazing grace, I share with you. I swear. I love you. Appreciate it. Same story. Same look. There's a different passion. I don't feel the same way it did when I read it the first time. So, y'all excuse me. So, I named this Here King. Listen, Here King. Um, I think. Here King. Hold your head up, stick your chest out, stand up and be revered, King. See, it's a weird thing. She not a movie, but somehow I'm trying to clean Okay, sounds it. good. I mean, I'm caught in between, nice and mean, nightmares and dreams. I'm seeing things from the wrong side of the screen. Excuse me, young. And let's not act like this is something we've never seen. You know, a black man scream, oh so malicious, it distracts my dreams. This impacts all creeds, all races. Yet they dismiss us. There is no reason a grown man should be calling for his mama when she is no longer with us. Hold on, please, y'all. I can't breathe. I can't 
can't breathe is what he said. You would have thought it was a hundred times. And I can't breathe at the thought of you taking out one of mine. I can't breathe at the thought of a daddy, your brother, or sister, or cousin, or buzzin being taken before their time. Oh, man. I can't breathe. Here, King, I'm trying to clear things. Is it our demeanor or is it the fear kings? Insecure things? Is it, a, is it sadistic oblivious to the mission with no permission or is there something that I'm missing? I can't breathe, man. Got that phone call and changed everything I believe in. One minute. Yo, I can't breathe at the fact that my daddy gone for no reason. So, dear King, here, King, here is the new wave of change. He was, is, and always will be John Neville. Y'all, please, say his name. John Neville. Say his name. Hey, Talitha, that's right. We've been out here since about 9 o'clock tonight. The server is scheduled to run for about an hour, so that means we're on the very tail end of it. But today we have heard from members of clergy. There was a dance routine that was performed out here to represent healing. And now, I don't know if you can hear behind me, people are singing. I want to give you a closer look at that, and, and I'm going to pause for a minute so you can listen to this. They're saying we have been burned, burned by the fire. We are ashes, ashes, and smoke. But we will rise higher and higher with compassion, justice, and hope. They sang the same song at the beginning of the event. And prior to this, we actually heard from two of John Neville's children. They read spoken word poems that they wrote, and those were really emotional moments. We heard them talk about their father, the man that he was, and the fact that they don't believe any man should cry out for his mother saying that he can't breathe. And certainly those were two parts of that disturbing video that were released today. No mention of that video tonight. That was by plan. They are not showing the video here. That is on purpose. It says something very deep about this community, that the day the videos would be released, tonight we would see singing, dancing, and a peaceful protest in this manner, Talitha. We're going to be here all night. We hope to speak with some of these demonstrators. We'll bring you more coverage tonight on WXII 12 News at 11. For now, I'm Brianna Connor. We'll send things back inside to you. Cool. 10.30 as well? Okay, perfect. Okay.